this is quite nice. It's a USB powered aquarium pump and it costs about £7 in the UK. Available in a selection of colours, it's got a soft silicon case and that's also used for suspending it. And it comes with a length of the silicone rubber hose and an airstone. And I could show you it babbling, but I think most of you have seen that. I shall instead turn it on and let you hear it purring away and blowing air. What sort of length of hose do I get? One moment, I'll just measure this. It's approximately one metre of hose, uh, which is a good few feet, eh, about three, just short of four feet. Anyway, I digress already. Let's plug it in and see what its power consumption is. And some of you may be wondering, Rudang meter, some of you may have been wondering, uh, what would you use it for? It's designed, that, uh, let's go down here and take a look. It's designed for people who need backup aquarium ventilation. Things like if you're traveling to a fishing trip, that's 133 milliamps. If you're traveling to a fishing trip and you want to keep the live bait alive by bubbling air through it, or in the event of power failure, if you have an aquarium, this could be a backup system for putting some air into the actual the tank. Let me tell you what it, well, let me show you what it sounds like. It makes a whirring noise, it makes a purring noise, and if I tip it towards the microphone, you should get a little puff of air. Yeah, you did. Uh, Rightio, let's unplug it. Let's take this apart. So that's 133 milliamps, which is enough to keep a, a, the typical big power supply awake. So this is a silicon sleeve. I guess it's got a plastic casing in here. Oop, so let's fold this back. Mini pump, PYP 3 to 12 volts, Dacon DC. Oh, actually, I think this might just be the motor on its own. Is there anything in the back here? It is just the motor. And a big resistor. Okay, so we have a resistor with a value of 510. So, uh, 510. What is that? Because it's got the gold band after that. Uh, hold on. I'm going to 510. It's not going to be 510. I'm going to cut this. I'm going to cut this. I want to see what current it draws when the, that resistor's off. Let's find the value of that resistor first. I don't think it's that high. Let's put this up to the 2K range. This might be a ballast resistor to keep some power, USB power banks awake. Oh, that's low. That is unusually low. 50 ohms. I thought it would have been drawing a lot more current, unless it's that the voltage drop along this cable. Let's plug that in again. It's now dropped by 100 milliamps to 33 milliamps, and at that point, you're going to get much longer runtime off a power bank. That's quite a bit of ear pressure, but what you're not going to get is that uh, this power bank's fine. These ones from Poundland, these five pound ones, they stay awake continually. So it would run at 35 milliamps. That would run for a good length of time. But uh, if you plug this into one of the other power banks, the intelligent ones with the sort of the wake button and things like that, then you would find that it cut off automatically. That's probably why they've added this resistor, but it seems so wasteful. Uh, if you get one of these and you're running it from an application like batteries, you should be aware that you can remove this resistor and it will drop its power consumption dramatically. Okay, let's take a look inside the pump. That'd be quite interesting. I think I know what it's gonna be like, um, but we shall take a look inside and see. Where is that? Suitable mini screwdriver set with tiny little screwdrivers. Let's bring in this set. Let's use this one because they look tiny little screws. My guess is it's going to be a rotating, undulating multiple piston thing with little rubber flaps. Well, that's sophisticated. Wow, sounds like a Japanese sex toy. Hmm. <laughs> Vibrates while licking and sucking and blowing simultaneously. Wow. Uh, that after I've just blown in your ear with the unit. It just sounds like some smutty Japanese schoolgirl and businessman thing. I'm using the wrong type of screw here. 
but that's all right, screwdriver. It doesn't matter. I'm not really bothered. All we really want to know is what's in here. Uh, no, I, I am bothered because this is not coming out all the way. We're going to have to go all the way here with this marvellous shark's toy. There are the little rubber flaps. God, there's no, there's no nice way to say it, is there? It's a pump. It has vibrating rubber flaps. Uh, I think there's another layer here of little one-way valves. I think we've got air channels for going in. I can see little uh, channels there. What about under here? Is this sealed? Is this going to stop me getting in? I think this might be glued shut. I think it is. Either that or clipped together quite tightly. I shall explore that afterwards. We have this rubber gasket here. Am I going to regret pulling this out? Can I pull it out? I think I can kind of pull it out. Well, let's uh, break the seal here. There's a little label there. I shall, uh, I shall use a knife and I shall break that seal. I could have just used heat to get that off, but under the pressure of time, no. There is, uh, oh, there it is. It's a concentric weight there. It, well, a concentric shaft. So it's basically, this shaft is going like this. And as it does so, it's pumping those little three little bellows, which, where's the air intake? Oh, there's a, there's an air outlet. So these little rubber flaps are one of those valves, but they're letting the air through this way. That must be when it's pulling air in. And these little channels are moulded into the silicon. And then it will push out through that way. And I'd guess if I can open this. Oh, these little channels are also part of that. So it's pulling air in from the edge. How does the air get into that, though? Is there a channel? And was that blocked by the silicon cover? I'm not seeing any obvious route for air in here. I shall explore that afterwards. Let's see if I can pop this off. I don't think I will be able to. I think it is staked into position. I shall use the spudger to gently ease it, but you know what? I think that really is. Because the screws only go down to that lower bit, I don't think this top bit is going to come off. I think it's glued into position, but I think I can see already. It is just basically little pinned flaps with a an air hole either side, so it can push air out through there, but it can't return, and that's the... So it's pulling air in uh, through these flaps here into this area, and then when it pushes it back out again, they close, and these ones open, and it pushes it out the front, so it is that continual... Because it's rotating like that, uh, it is a continual flow of little three three little air, air cylinders. It's quite neat, isn't it? It's very simple and clever. It's a very standard type of uh, air pump. But there we go. Uh, that is it. It's your little silicon air bubbler. Do you want to see it bubbling more? Will I put it back together and will we bubble water? Yes, I will. One moment, please. Just before I do put it back together, there's something you should see because the camera is effectively making it look like slow motion, although this is going up and down really fast. Uh, it's slowing it down, but that is the effect, what it's actually doing. But at really high speed, you're seeing a very much a slow-mo effect of that just because of the interference, the shutter speed. Okay, enough of that. I'll go and get the glass of water and put this together, and then we can see it bubbling. How many bubbles? Lots of bubbles. That is really quite impressive. How much air that's put now? It's like a very, very fizzy drink. I'm not sure what it will be in terms of volume of litres per hour, but you know what? It would certainly, it looks very active, particularly given this is only drawing, now that the resistor's cut off, it's only drawing about 30 milliamps. I shall uh, unplug it. It is unplugged. The resistor is a four-band uh, resistor. It's green, brown, black, gold, which is 510, and then the gold actually divides by 10. So it's a 51-ohm resistor, which... On the 5 volts, that was adding 100 milliamps to the dissipation. 5 volts, 100 milliamp. Uh, that's about... What is that? Uh, 5 volts times 100 milliamp is 0.5 watts, is it not? I should know that off the top of my head. It is 0.5 watts. I just wanted to double check. So that would just be... This was effectively 
using uh, this resistor was using three times as much power roughly as the pump itself. So this is something that you should know if you get one of these. If you have a 5 volt power supply or even a 3 volt, shall we test it on different voltages? Let's do that. Let's test it on the bench power supply. And we'll run the voltage down and see what happens. So I'm going to connect it up like this. I'm going to turn the power supply on. So that's the... 5 volts, let's turn it down to, let's see at what point it stops. So that's down about 3 volts now, and it's still churning bubbles away. Oh, it's starting to really slow down. As it approaches 1.5 volts, hold on, it's still running, it's still pumping some air. What the voltage is that? That is ridiculously low. Hold on. And by ridiculously low, I mean 1.16. You could literally run that. I don't think it would start itself, though, would it? It does. You could run that off a 1.5 volt battery, but it wouldn't put out an awful lot of air, but it would create an airflow. But uh, running it on 3 volts, let's uh, stick the meter in again and turn it up to 3 volts. Or even 2.4 to emulate a couple of nickel metal hydride cells. That's pretty good. What about a lithium cell at 4.2 volts? Nudge that back. Uh, say about 41 milliamps. Uh, going down to the point it's going to cut off at about 3 volts. Actually, uh, with protection, it cut off at lower than 3 volts, but uh, it's 36 milliamps still there and still producing tons. So you could, if you remove that res resistor, you could just run this motor directly from a single lithium cell, and it would run for absolutely ages. Keep in mind that uh, with a 1, a 1 amp hour cell, and that's like a really low capacity, well, let's go for a 2,000 milliamp hour cell. Uh, you're probably looking at about 57 hours runtime. So over two days continuous operation of a 2 amp hour cell. So that would be quite handy if you did have an aquarium and you wanted to keep it oxygenated uh, in the event of a uh, power failure. And you had a stack of fully charged 2 uh, of uh, 18650 cells knocking around. But there we go. Interesting. A nice construction. It's very simple. It really is just a rubber cup around that with uh, little air fins up the side. But I think the air is being taken in through the back here. And then it's going in through, uh, it looks as though it's going in through the motor itself, so it'll actually be helping keep that cool in a sense. I couldn't find any other obvious channel in, although now I'm looking at this, I'm seeing that little channel there, which may actually be the air intake channel. It probably is actually, that's probably one of the air options there, but I guess some air might go through the motor as well. Uh, very neat. It's a nice little pump, very smart, a nice simple construction. I do like that. That is neat.